So I've spent a lot of time learning Minecraft's command system, and I can do some pretty cool things with it. But a couple months ago, a question popped into my head. Could I make Minecraft play itself? As in, could I make Minecraft do the things a player does, but without any actual players? Well, this footage you're watching currently is the result of that, and there is a lot to unpack. But let's back up and explain how we got here. I spent some time thinking about how I was going to pull this off, and the plan I landed on was to hijack a mob and then see if I can teach it to mine diamonds. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, if you actually break down everything needed to accomplish that, there's a lot this mob will have to do. It's at least a 10 step process to mine diamonds, and the mob is going to need to be able to break and place blocks, craft and smelt, explore and understand its surroundings, and the hardest part of all, it's going to have to do all those things logically. It's a big task. But how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So let's start with the most basic part. The first thing we gotta do is actually choose a mob to hijack. I ultimately landed on a wandering trader for two reasons. The first is that it matches the two by one block size of a player. And the second is that wandering traders have a very useful mechanic I can tap into. When they spawn into the world, the first thing the trader does is walk up to the player. They do this by storing coordinates in their NBT data. That means I can just give them a location and they will automatically go to it. Like see right now, the trader's following me around because I'm constantly giving it my coordinates. All right, so that's all well and good, but how are we gonna get this thing to actually play the game without my input? Well, the plan is to use a custom AI using, <laughs> again, only commands, no mods. I'm gonna be real, I have no idea how AIs are supposed to be written, so I'm freestyling this. But I made a plan for a system based around three pillars, sight, prioritization, and movement modes. Let's start with sight. Mobs actually do have a sight line in the code, and while I can't gather data from it directly, I can use it to create my own version. I'm gonna use something called a raycast, which if you don't know, it's actually pretty straightforward. Basically, it's a dot that moves in the direction the trader is looking, and every time that dot hits something, it will categorize it into something like wood or stone. Here's a proof of concept. The flame particles are getting spawned by the dot as it flies by, but it's doing it so fast that it just looks like a solid line. Now let's see if it will actually detect if it collides with a block. And yes, okay, sweet. And this brings us to our next pillar, prioritization. Now that I can collect information about the trader's surroundings, we need to make the trader use that information to make decisions that will help it accomplish its goal of getting diamonds. Or in other words, basically we need to give it a brain. And let me tell you, this is easily the most complicated part of the whole thing. There is actually a surprising amount of nuance in Minecraft, and the small details can entirely change the player's priorities. So look, I'm not even gonna pretend I came up with a perfect solution for this, but it works well enough. Essentially, I created a giant flowchart for the trader to follow, which will lead it to prioritizing actions that will help it progress towards its goal. The first thing it considers is what tier of pickaxe it has, and then it reverse engineers the steps needed to acquire the next tier. Then, based off this process, it will figure out what the most basic ingredient that it's missing is, and it will prioritize getting it. And that's the basic idea, there's a whole lot more I could get into about how the system works, but we would be here for a very long time if we really tried to start breaking this all down. Besides, there's one more pillar to this system to look at. Now that the trader can observe its surroundings and make decisions based on what it senses, we need to give it actions it can actually take to complete those goals. I accomplish this in the form of what I call movement modes. Basically, think of them as a toolkit of actions that the prioritization system can call on to accomplish its priorities. For example, if the trader has prioritized finding wood, it will use a scan movement to look for trees. Then once it finds one, it will use a go to block movement to get within breaking range. And then finally, it will use a get block action to harvest the wood. Each priority has a quote unquote AI profile that is specialized for the task it's trying to accomplish, just like the one I just explained for wood. And that's pretty much it. The trader senses its surroundings, weighs its options, and then takes actions intended to help it complete its goal. The only question is, is it actually good enough to start from scratch and play Minecraft just as a player would, all the way up to getting diamonds? Well, let's find out.
my god, it actually did it. In fact, it did it faster than me. I did a few runs myself, and my best time was 1226. The trader's best time is 840. I've posted the uncut versions of both the trader's and my best runs on my second channel if you want to see it unfiltered. And if you want to try this bot out for yourself, it's on my Patreon. Link to both of those in the description. And if you like this, I have a whole series where I quote unquote fix Minecraft without any mods, only using data packs like I did here. In the most recent one, I completely revamped the ocean monument, including a new boss. Check it out, it's on the screen right now. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!